Hi everybody, it's Dr. Turngrass Roll again, and I'm here to teach you today all about place value. Are you ready to see what you are expected to learn by the end of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the place values in a two-digit number. You are also going to be able to determine which number is represented by grouping objects in tens. Take a good look at this group of sticks. I want you to do three things. Take your finger and draw a circle around each group of 10 sticks. So I want you to see how many bundles of 10 you can make. Then I would like for you to say how many sticks are left over. You're going to have to write both of those numbers down because we want to know how you can write this number. Take some time and think about it. Remember, I asked you to see how many groups of 10 you can make. Then I asked you to say how many sticks were left over. I also asked you to write both numbers down so we can see how many sticks we have all together. You can see we have two groups of 10 and one, two, three, four, five sticks left over. Two groups of 10 and five sticks left over. We can write these numbers by saying two tens and five left over is 25. A little deeper into the idea of groups of tens and ones. If you look in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, you will see that I have 10 cubes. If I join them together, then I will have one group of 10. So this means that 10 ones equals one 10, or 10 ones is the same as one 10. Now screw on that thinking gap nice and tight. And let's go down here. Here we have 27 ones. Do you see that? What if I count them and place them in groups of 10? I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One group of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is two groups of 10. And then how many do I have left over? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left over. So that means then two tens, you see, one, two, and seven ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is the same as these 27 cubes. So 27 ones then is equal to, or equal to means the same as, is the same as two tenths and seven ones. Did you get that? Well, let's do a bit more. Say how many tens and ones there are in each of the squares. So let's look at the first square. At the first square, we see one, two, three groups of tens and 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, once. That number is 37. You see how quickly we counted those because we didn't have to count each and every cube. Let's try it again. In this square, we see one, two, three, four, five tenths, and one, two, three, four, five ones. Hmm, five tenths and five ones. What do you think our number is? If you said 55, you are absolutely right. Give yourself a big kiss. Now, before we do this last one together, I want you to try it on your own. Super counters, are you ready? Super counters, are you ready? Do you have your spy eyes on? Are you ready to go? There are one, two groups of 10 and one, two, three, four, five ones. So that number is 25. Were you correct? Very good. Here, we have a challenge for you. You're gonna do the same thing we did with the sticks, but this time with these groups of pictures. They have the tens on the left and the ones on the right. You're gonna write on the lines how many groups of 10 and how many ones you see. Then in the box, you should put how many there are all together without counting each and every one of the pictures. Go ahead. I'm back. Here you go. How many did you get correct? Did you find the tens and the ones? Did you write how many tens there are and how many ones there are? And did you remember to think of what the number might be? Awesome. Let's look a bit closer at this idea. How can we work out cubes without counting them all? Well, we have to think in tens and ones, of course. There are one, two, three, four, five groups of tens, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ones. We know through working through this lesson that five tens and nine ones, when they come together, make the number 59. Now here's where you really need to put on your thinking cap. And our best strategy for solving this problem is going to be to draw a picture. Hunter and Parker 
have 47 mangoes. They sell them in packs of 10. A, how many packs can they make? B, how many mangoes will they have left over? Is your thinking cap on? Is it screwed on nice and tight? Think about it again. Hunter and Parker have 47 mangoes. They sell them in packs of 10. How many packs can they make? How many mangoes will they have left? If we think in terms of tens and ones, we would know that 47 means one, two, three, four groups of tens and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones. So what does this mean then? This means that the boys can make four packs of 10. It also means that the boys will be left with seven mangoes. So the 47 mangoes will make four packs to sell and they will be left with seven mangoes. Here you try it on your own. Do you see the red word that says G-A-M-E? That spells game. You're going to click the link below the word game and it's going to take you to this cool website called IXL.com. Here, for a little while, you're going to play a game that asks you to type in the number based on the amount of tens and ones you see. Once you've done that for a while, you're going to go to the worksheet. Word in blue, spelled W-O-R-K-S-H-E-E-T. But here's where you're gonna need someone's help. You're gonna call someone who can print for you. They're going to print out the worksheet. At the end of each row, you're going to see a number. Then, you're going to see two boxes. Your job is to place in the boxes how many tenths and how many ones are in those numbers. Do you think you can handle that? Are you ready to try it on your own? Well, I sure hope so. I'll see you soon.